this is an incredibly versatile piece of hardware. Hi there, it's great to see you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today we're going to be taking a look at an all new product that's come through from DCC Concepts. And this is the ESP Wire Free System. Now you might have seen a little bit about this uh, out and about. Indeed, at the Great Electric Train Show, uh, DCC Concepts were there demoing this new product. But they've very, very kindly sent over an ESP receiver unit and an ESP sender unit and uh, suggested that I have a little play and just see what I thought of these. So knowing loosely how it works, I thought that I would set up a small, completely wire-free control panel that lets me control, in the case of the units that I've been sent, three points and not actually need to be tethered to the layout by a big long cable. And for me, that was the big standout USP of this product. Although I know quite a few other people are getting really excited about a number of different uses. It can be used in association with track detection circuits using their LMID to actually tell you the real time position of a train on your layout, which is great for things like hidden fiddle yards. And also I believe helixes um, have also been suggested as something that you can uh, just at a glance at a control panel, see the progress of a train within a helix without needing a mountain of extra wiring. Now these ESP units are very particularly referred to as wire free. It is not wireless. It does not need to be connected to a router. Forget about all that and forget about all of the problems that come with trying to set up a wireless network. This is its own boss. It works in its own way. And actually it's not limited in bandwidth. So you could have hundreds of these in the same room and they wouldn't interfere with each other. And that leads to the interesting situation that if you were to use this on, say, an exhibition layout, then it wouldn't actually interfere with anybody else in that exhibition hall who'd also decided to use ESP control on their layout. And that means that this is an incredibly versatile piece of hardware. So I'm really looking forward to putting it to the test today. So come with me in association with Train-O-Matic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And we're going to step into the world of DCC Concepts ESP and see what we can come up with with a little bit of wire-free point control. <laughs> The first job in the installation is finding an appropriate place for the receiver. You don't have to have line of sight or anything like that. And actually, for pretty much anybody, the range that these will work quite happily at is far more than you'll ever need. So I chose instead to mount this somewhere that was convenient to plumb it into the existing power system for the layout. The receiver needs a power input, which can either be DC or DCC. And then it has the DCC output, which will go on to whatever is downstream on your layout from it. Do bear in mind that the output on this is only about 1.5 amps. So you can't use this as a final piece in the power into your layout. Otherwise, you will basically limit your entire layout to that 1.5 amps. Instead, and this isn't actually made 100% clear in the instructions, the idea is to put this in series upstream of my 5 amp booster. I use an alpha panel. You can see the rear of it just tucked in up there. So what I'm going to be doing is putting this in series with that so that the NCE plugs into the panel, the panel plugs into the ESP receiver, and the ESP receiver plugs on into my alpha power and alpha box. That way, there's no strain on this particular part of the system. It will simply overlay its signals on top of what the NCE is sending 
and it leaves the power booster to power the full layout, so there'll be no problems there. The plugs on this board are absolutely standard and they are exactly the same as the plugs used on the back of the alpha panel. This means it's a really easy job to locate the uh, output for the track from the alpha panel, unplug it, switch it around and just plug that straight into the DCC output of the ESP. I've then used the plugs that come with the ESP to create a short fly lead. This on the power inside of the ESP just plugs neatly to the power out on the alpha panel. Because the plugs on the ESP are exactly the same as the alpha panel, this couldn't be easier. The only thing then left to do is to flick the switch to turn the ESP on and then to pair it with the sender by simply pushing the button and you'll see that the light starts to flash. All we then need to do is to go to the sender part of the system and get it to pair and it will automatically then pair with this. Once they're paired, these flashing red lights will go solid, always on, and you're ready then, if you need to, to pair another sender with the receiver. As the instructions make clear, only do this one at a time. So we're back here now on the top side of Weir Yard. I've got the ESP sender unit, and just for the simplicity of setting it up, I've installed a fly lead that uh, allows it to connect directly to my track bus. Now I've done this with a length of wire and a couple of crocodile clips directly onto the rails and it's a great temporary way of just being able to power this up and set it up really really quickly with a minimum of fuss. You'll see that I've also taken the time to set all the jumpers. Now you'll see over here there's two headers and this allows this board to communicate with either a single receiver or two receivers and you just use the supplied headers to set that. Now I just want it to communicate back to the single receiver so I've set these accordingly. On each of the three channels we've got two options for each channel. The top one is what type of switch is going to be uh, wired into here. So you can either have momentary or on off. I've chosen to go momentary for channel one and then on off for two and three. Underneath the red ones, these are whether the inputs are going to be zero voltage or powered. Each of these are going to be completely unpowered, so I have set those jumpers to the zero volts option. We're now at a stage where we can turn the unit on, and then for pairing, it's just simply a case of pressing the pairing button on both this and the receiver, and they will find each other and they will remember that setting. Once the light has gone to solid on, that means that they have paired quite happily and you're ready to go. Do bear in mind that these three accessory channels by default will be number one, two, and three. To change these to something else is just as easy as if you were using any of the other DCC Concepts accessory decoder ranges such as the ADS decoders or the cobalt digital point motors and there is just this really handy run and set switch. So we move it up to set, the light begins to flash and then using our DCC handset we just choose cycling through accessories. I'm going to choose number 47, enter, get that to change and you're sending that command to the board to basically tell it this command you are listening for is the accessory decoder address that you will now be on. So that should now be set. That will now be set for number 47, 48, 49. Once we're happy with that, we flick the switch back to run. The light goes solid and this is now on that address. What I actually want to do is try three different switches just to see how they work. For this 
I'm using some old Hornby 00 switches. These were new in the 1950s and it just shows how versatile the ESP is that something as old as this that was designed and made many, many decades before this was even conceived can nonetheless still be perfectly functional and usable with it. You can use multiple types of switches and these three different switches that I'm going to use the maroon switch is a D1 type switch, which is a passing contact. That means that as you move the lever, where it is in its resting position, it's completely isolated. And there's just a momentary pulse of power as we move that lever across and back again. And these were designed for use with uh, solenoid type points so that you just got that initial pulse to change the point, but it wasn't powering the coils at all time. The second one is a D3 switch, the one in the green. These were intended for colour light signals. So they're basically an on, on switch. They give you two possible outputs that would have otherwise been wired to the green bulb and the red bulb, and using the switch you'd change between them. We've got a common terminal on this side, just like we've got with the passing contact switch. So what we're gonna do with each of these is use the common wire, and then just one of the two terminals on the other side. These have already been pre-wired up. The final switch is the black D2 type switch. This is an on-off switch. And the whole purpose of this is these were designed for use with isolating rails. So they would either turn them on or turn them off. So with these, it's really, really simple. We just wire both the terminals back to the block. The ESP comes with a full set of these and they are just really easy to plug in. I'm going to turn the board off whilst I plug these in, but we're just one, two and three. And then turn the board back on and first things first, momentary contact switch. And you hear the solenoid fire, you see the light flash, the only issue with this is it's easy to make the lever go out of sync with the points. It has no way of knowing which side the lever is on because of the nature of the passing contact switch. So if you had something like a Cobalt S lever, the momentary contact terminals would work in the same way as this. The problem with that is that the lever can end up on the wrong side from what the point is doing and there's no real direct feedback to tell you which way the point is set. The next one that I've got here, the on-on switch. Now as we're only using one half of this, effectively it just becomes an on-off switch. So we flick it one way, we flick it back, and the beauty of this is that this switch remains in sync with the point because the ESP is sending the signal when it gets a connection, it turns the point one way, and when it has no connection, it will automatically turn the point the other way. If I turn this off, move the lever across, and then turn this back on, you will hear that the points automatically resync themselves. The reason for this is that the ESP knows whether there's either a connection or no connection and it changes the point accordingly if needed. So if these switches get moved whilst the power is off, everything will reset itself so that these are in sync with the points when you turn the ESP back on. The black D2 lever works in exactly the same way. So those are three common types of switches, all wired comfortably into the ESP and all changing points really, really well. If you want more than three channels, it's really, really simple. This terminal here allows you to daisy chain into another and then another still. And each of these will then, just like the AEU or the Alpha Central, will take on consecutive numbers. So you could end up with one, two, three, the next board would be four, five, six, and so on. So it's a really easy way of building up a completely wireless control panel in this way. Now that I'm happy that all this is working, I can step it up to the next level. 
I want completely wire-free, and that means I want rid of this, and I just want to plug a battery into it, and then I can have a control panel where I can change three points, and I don't need to be tethered to the layout. So this is the small little unit that I've made up, as you can see, no wires connecting this onto anywhere else. I'm powering it from a 9 volt battery. Now even though the instructions say to use from 12 volts upwards if you're going to run it on DC, what I've actually found, and I've talked with DCC Concepts, is that a 9 volt battery is acceptable for a small control panel such as this, and it's one of the ways with electronics that quite often they will work slightly outside of uh, the specification that was made for them. Um, and uh, they say that this is perfectly acceptable to use it like this. And it just means that we've got ourselves a really nice, neat, portable control panel. And you could imagine making this up into a really neat little box with all of this hidden away inside and just have some really nice switches on the outside. And it does, of course, work. So, as you can hear, hopefully, all three of these just switch when uh, I move them across and the corresponding points are still changing on the layout. So what I'm going to do now, let's go over and just have a look at those points changing with the completely wire-free control panel. So again, this is the area where some of those points are and I've got my completely wire-free control panel here. So I'm um, just trying to find which one it's on. I think this middle one, and you can see there, no wires whatsoever. And this just means you're not tethered to a layout. You can change all those points perfectly, first time, every time. And you don't need that long wire to tether you back to the layout. You can just take this anywhere you want. And you could imagine on a large layout, it just means that you can really, really easily move about and be exactly where you need to be to keep a close eye on those trains and the points. And they just change. And it's a positive action first time, every time. And when you're done, we just turn off the panel, and as you can see, no problem whatsoever. And of course, when we boot it back up, again, completely wire free, it syncs these switches, the on, on, and the on, off, uh, although we're only using one half of the on, on, so it acts like an on, off switch. Uh, everything syncs up, so you can have your levers perfectly in sync with your points. So there you have it. I'm really pleased with this. Of course, I just neaten this up and uh, all will be well. So there you have it. It's actually a really interesting and easy to put together system. Now the instructions I felt could have done within a little bit of extra clarity in places, but they are the first iteration. And I think there's still a lot of exploration going on in just what this product is capable of. It is certainly incredibly versatile. For the wire-free control panel, I felt that it was really quite simple to set up once I'd mastered the basics and it worked positively first time every time. And what it meant for me was that I could set this to uh, control points somewhere on the layout and then get really close to them, not be tethered to the control panel over here and find myself just, you know, peering over to the corner of the layout and reaching out at arm's length to try and get as close as possible to those points to see that they've positively changed. It just wasn't any of that. And I just thought that was a really great system. Now, if you go onto the DCC Concepts own focus forum, there's a lot of people on there talking about other uses for this product. And certainly in conjunction with LMIDs, which is the uh, detection circuits that uh, DCC Concepts do, and also some interesting uh, things with ABC units to allow trains to only proceed to the next ABC section if that has become free. So you could have a number of trains all following each other on the same track and they'd never catch each other up because they would patiently wait in a section until the section in front was clear, just like real signalling. 
I've also heard of other people finding uses for these with track occupancy and allowing them to know exactly where on, say, for example, hidden sidings there were trains and also even on a helix to be able to chart the progress of a train up and down a helix without physically having to climb underneath their baseboards to take a look. And uh, that meant that they could do this in a way that didn't need a huge rat's nest of wiring. And I think what's important to think Think about these is that there are certainly a lot of uses where what this product does is it simplifies something that you would otherwise need a lot more circuitry and wiring to do and it's all about cutting out the wiring. For other uses such as the wire-free control panel that was shown today this is something that is pretty much unique to this product and because of the way it works it's wire-free not wireless it doesn't suffer from any of the issues that a wireless network would do. And indeed, if you went to an exhibition and used this on your exhibition layout and everybody else in the hall was using the same system on their exhibition layouts, there's no crosstalk, there's no interference. They would all just work. Indeed, you could actually cram a lot of these ESP receivers and senders onto one layout. Uh, I've seen a layout with over 50 of these sender units in place in one room, all working flawlessly. It can be done. So I think that this is a product that is definitely one to watch. It's another tool in the modeler's arsenal, but it's a really powerful tool at that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tickle that like button, share it too, and subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think of this all new ESP system from DCC Concepts? Is this something that after watching this video, you're thinking that actually you might want to try this and put it to some use on your layout? Have you already got some of these and made use of them? What have you actually thought about them and how have they been in everyday usage? And have you come up with a new alternative and innovative use for ESP? I'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment down below and I do read every single one. You can also check us out over on Patreon and we've also still got a few of those Monday Club Acuriscale wagons left to snag. If you want to head on over to the affiliate link down below in the description box to Rails of Sheffield and you can pick them up now in stock. But hurry, stocks won't last long at the rate that they're selling. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. And until next time, bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.